Now then guys, how you doing? I'm Craig and thank you for joining me on another rebuild. So today we're going to rebuild Hearts. Now, going to Scotland, there was only one team I was going to build. If you've seen my FM21 save, the King of Hearts, you know, I've got a bit of an affection for Hearts now. I really like them as a club. I like what they're about. Yes, they have had some controversy with that relegation a couple of seasons ago. It shouldn't really have been a relegation. They were robbed, absolutely robbed. There'll be some of you that agree, there'll be some of you that won't. Somebody had to go down, I suppose. But the way it happened still leaves a sour taste in a lot of Hearts fans, I'm sure, and a lot of Scottish football fans. But I like the club. I like everything about them. I like what they do. I like what they do in in the community and I like what they do off the field so hearts was the only way to go for me so what I will say before we start is that if you are new to the channel please give it a thumbs up and subscribe as this channel continues to grow it really has like got a mind of its own at the moment and there's plenty more rebuilds coming and I think you should turn a bell on just for that as well so yes if you are new to the channel please do that for us that'd be fantastic and if you are a continued supporter thank you very much means a lot so let's get in to rebuilding hearts Right then guys, so before people start with the why are you rebuilding Hearts, why are you rebuilding a club that's never achieved anything, Hearts are the third most successful club in Scotland, joint with Hibs unfortunately, with four Premier League titles. So when we have a look at the club's history, they've won four Premier League crowns. Now yes, they were some time ago in 1985, 1987, 1958 and 1960. So yeah, it's been a fair old time since they last won a Premier League crown. Scottish Cup wise, the last won it in 2012, so that's the last bit of silverware they tasted apart from the championship well the less said about that the better however they did bounce straight back up after that controversial relegation but yes it's all about winning some silverware this time round as i don't think a mid-table finish is going to suffice for the supporters you know they should be in the top three in my opinion celtic and rangers are the two that need dethroning hibs could scoot about obviously aberdeen have had their day as well but yes for us we really need to push on to that next level but what are the finances wise then to help push us on? I've got zero in the transfer budget. That is not a problem though, as we're still getting 100% of transfer revenue. So any player sales made, I will get 100% of that. Wage budget wise, we've got 72k to spend. I'm currently spending 70. Overall balance, 1.7 million. Debts wise though, we've got no debts. We're actually in the black, 827k in the black. Buzzing with that. But it was expected as this is now obviously a club that's run by the fans. Massive again, you know, one of the only clubs, if not the only club in the world, I believe, that's, that's now fan-owned. So looking at the club vision then, the club culture is to sign players under the age of 22 for the future, develop players using the club's youth system and to play attack and football. The five-year plan is to work within the wage budget, obviously financial security. The end of the current season then is to qualify for the Europa Conference League. Absolutely want European football next season. To reach the quarter-final of the Scottish Cup is a minimum and to reach the quarter-final of the Better Red Cup is a minimum as well. At the end of next season, he expects us to challenge for a cup and become recognised as best of the rest. My contract also expires at the end of next season. So if it goes badly wrong, this could be a two-season rebuild, not a five-season rebuild. So yes, if you are new to the channel, I didn't explain earlier on, I've got five years to rebuild the club and do the best I possibly can with it. Now, it's five years simulated. All I do is the transfer windows, the ins and the outs. My assistant manager takes over the club and pushes us forward and we see what we can achieve with the simulation. So looking at the squad dynamics and team cohesion is very poor. Club atmosphere is good and my geo support is good. Top influencers wise and Craig Gordon supporters. That's the big thing as he is the main man at heart. Bit of a club legend that guy and he's at the back end of his career now certainly. Still doing a cracking job however replacing him will be a big ask. I've got 5 players to support us, 16 players that have no real opinion of us. And looking at the social groups, I've got two players that aren't involved. They're also Matt Smith and Liam Boyce. Boyce has been, those players have been around for a couple of seasons at least now. So it surprises me that they're not involved in the core social group. Looking at tactic then, we're going to play a 4-4-2. I think that's the safest way to go for the first season at least. You know what you're getting out of a 4-4-2. Tactical style at the minute is a tick attacker mentality cautious. A lot of that will change. But I am a creature of habit. If you've watched any of my other episodes... I do end up with a 2 up top regardless, it could be a 4-1-3-2 or a 4 2 or a 4 4 2 doesn't matter. But there's always 2 up top at the end of it. I like to play a deep line and forward or a target man and then a complete forward and an advanced forward next to them. Anywhere, anything else behind that doesn't really matter, but it's always a 2 up top. Competitions wise then, we've got the Sims Premiership, the Scottish Cup and the Bet Fred Cup. That is it so far. Obviously no European competitions as we've just been promoted back to the Premier League. And then looking at the squad depth, we've got decent striking options with Liam Boyce being the main man with three and a half stars up top. 
Defensive left and right positions, Janelli. Now, what a player he is. I'm so happy that they got him on a free transfer and managed to keep him at the club. With Walker on both sides as well. We've then got Devlin in the midfield, who's just joined us, three and a half star as well. Defensive left, Kingsley. And defensive right, Matt Smith. Both three stars. We've got Sutar can play out there as well. But Sutar, the main man, is my centre-back option. Now, I've looked at his attributes and I think they've done this guy dirty. I think he's better than what he's being listed at here. Yes, he's 24-year-old. He's only going to get better. But heading, marking, tackling and strength all only 13. You know, I think I could go out now and get a free transfer better than this guy. And I, but I think that's unfair to him and the club. And then in goal, obviously, Craig Gordon, the main man. A guy that we're going to have to look at replacing. Again, he looks quite poor here attributes-wise, but he is 38. I think the best thing here is probably having for this season and look at replacing him and try to keep him in and around the squad as a coaching option. But yeah, that is it then, guys. So I think for me, the big thing now is trying to do some business in the transfer window. Not much, as I've got nothing to play with at all. And the squad, when we look at it, it's not a deep squad. There's not a lot of options there. When we round it up by position, you know, we've not really got a lot of options. We've got quite a bit of attacking options here, but that is about it. As far as wages go, my top wage spend is on Ben Woodburn. Now, he's a good player, very good player. Again, attributes-wise, I've done him dirty there. He's only 21, though. And as far as transfer value goes, John Sutar at 2.9 million is my most expensive player. So, yeah, like I say, what we're going to do is we're going to move forward to the start of Season 1. Well, hopefully, I've strengthened and I've tinkered just a little bit. Right then, guys, so what do you do when you've got no money and nobody wants to buy any of your plays and you don't really need to change your squad in that first season? Well, you do nothing, and that is basically what I've done. So we've just got to the first game of the season, and our transfer budget is still zero. Wage budget is still 72,000, and overall balance is £3 million. Again, the debt hasn't really changed. We're now at zero, but we're not in the red, so that's the main thing. Transfer-wise, I've done absolutely nothing. So we've brought in a total of 10 players before I took over for a grand total of £0 and going out 1.3k. That is it. We have had interest in some of our players and we look at the squad. You know, there's plenty of players that are wanted that I didn't want to let go. And Cammy Logan I've promoted from the under-18s, but that is it. You know, I want to get some of these players featuring. I have had a look at some older players, and like I said just before the break, I didn't want to bring too many more older players into the squad. Like, as I say, I've got Craig Gordon, 38, Michael Smith, 32, McKay Stevens and Boyce, both 30 apiece. We've got players that are going to be reaching the end of the contract by the end of the season. Plenty of them, you know, I may look at keeping a couple of those players on, but that is about it. There's not a lot else going on for the start of Season 1. I didn't feel that we needed to have a massive overhaul on this one, as we have got a good enough squad to get into the top three, I believe. Yes, you know, I may eat my words at the end of this, so I'm going to look at the teams in there. Celtic and Rangers, the two for me, nobody else. Yes, Hibs might stand in our way, but you want to get bragging rights over your Edinburgh rivals, and then there's Aberdeen potentially there as well. So looking at the tactics, and this is probably how we're going to line up. We're going to line up for that 4-4-2 for the first season. I think it's the safest tactic to go, as we're not going to be able to topple the top two to start with. So we're going to go with Gordon and Goal, Cochrane, Moore, Sutar and Smith at the back, with McKay, Steven, Devlin, Banningham and Janelli across the middle with Woodburn and Boyce up front. That is it, you know. There are plenty of players that can feature in other positions. However, that'll probably be my starting eleven all the way through. So looking at... The season preview then, we are actually expected a third place finish, 33-1 to with Aberdeen to win the league, Hibs expected a fifth place finish and we've got no players in the Media Dream 11 which doesn't surprise us, with the majority of those players from Celtic and Rangers, so that is it then guys. As the first in the first season I haven't tried to completely overhaul the squad and do a massive rebuild, I think it's all going to be about season two, let's just get into Europe, that's it, you know, I'll take that Europa League conference place absolutely as we tend to push on. So what we're going to do then is we're going to move forward to the end of season one where hopefully we've got a top three finish and plenty to talk about. Right then guys, so season one is down. The first thing I can see is we've just managed to scrape a fifth place finish. That teaches me for not strengthening in the summer. We should have really went for it. I should have brought somebody in to try and change it up. However, I haven't. And we've just scraped that fifth place finish, like I say. Goal difference getting us through. We've done D, finishing on 53 points as well. Aberdeen on 52. Then again, if we'd won our last game, which it looks like we've just lost to Rangers 1-0 there, we could have finished in third place and all would have been forgiven. But let's have a look at the league table and in all its glory. So 38 games played, 13 wins, 14 draws, the highest amount of draws in the league. 11 losses is massive as well. 42 goals scored, 47 conceded, minus 5 goal difference, 53 points on the board. Winner of the league, obviously Celtic, with Rangers in second place, 5 points behind. Both teams had a bit of a shocker towards the back end of the season. Rangers drawn three of their last five games, with Celtic drawing two of them. St Mirren and Motherwell both going down as well. 
when we look at the past positions then, we've basically minced about mid-table all season. Then going up into fourth place with a 1-0 victory over Dundee United, only to get smashed 5-0 by Celtic. Then we have a 1-1 draw with Hibs and then lose 1-0 to Rangers. How did we get on against Hibs? So Hibs finished in fourth place, jumping up on the last day of the season with a 2-0 victory over Dundee United. But I think when we look at these fixtures, Hibs, we were unbeaten against them all season. So we played them four times, two 1-0 victories and two 1-1 draws. I'll take that. So Hibs didn't have any bragging rights over us this season. Competitions-wise, like I say, fifth place finish in the Premier League. In the Scottish Cup, we were knocked out in the fifth round by Rangers. And we lost in the semi-final of the Premier Sports Cup. I think I've been calling it the Betfred Cup. That's that's what it is to me. But yeah, we were knocked out in the semi-final by Rangers anyway. Let's have a look where we absolutely smashed. Rangers won that though with a 3-2 victory in the final. Let's have a look at the semi-final. 1-1 draw. We were knocked out on penalties playing at Hampden Park. Finances-wise, then we've got 1.1 million to spend in this transfer window. But something's going on here is we've only got 30% of the transfer revenue. Does that mean debts and loans? No, we're still in the black. I thought we were in some financial trouble then. But yeah, they're only giving us 30% of any income. Wage budget, we've now got 98k to spend and we're currently spending 72. And overall balance is 1.5 million. So it's rosy. I'm not happy with that 30% though. Should we be letting players go? So club vision wise then I got a C plus for this season, notable criticisms are very disappointed about Hearts, heavy 5-0 defeat to Celtic and are disappointed about my 1-1 draw with Hibs as well, I'm not surprised, no disappointed there though, you know they're not distraught about any of that stuff, the rest of it is not judging. And then when we look at squad dynamics after this season, team cohesion is average, club atmosphere is average, but it is in the red and my geo support is very good, I've got plenty of players that want to leave, we'll address that over the summer. And then I've got no players that oppose us, 10 players that have no real opinion, and 13 players supporters. I've now got three players in my team leader section, Gordon, Suta, and Smith. And then looking at the player and team stats for the season then. So Liam Boyce was the top goal scorer in the league. Let's just have a look then and see how he fared against everybody else. So top goal scorer in the league was Aaron Connolly with 21 goals, McNulty with 18. In fairness, he didn't even finish in the top 10, boys. So there you go. We were a million miles away from anybody else within the league. And bearing in mind, that's 17 goals is across all competitions. So he only actually scored 11 goals in the Premier League. Six in seven games in the Cup, though. But yeah, back to the highest average rate and Morgan a 7.16. Most assists was Cochrane with 8. Best pass completion was Suta with 95%. Most player of the match awards was Moore and Cochrane with 6 apiece. Most yellow cards was Moore with 12. And two players got the most red cards with 1 apiece. Team stats wise then, we scored 42 goals which is the 5th worst. But we conceded 47 which is the 5th best. Yellow cards wise 59 which is the 6th best. And red cards 2 which is the 5th worst. But Tynecastle rocking out with the 3rd best attendance this season which is massive for us. So there we go then guys first season out the way believe me i'm gonna have a rebuild this summer as we need to strengthen this squad a fifth place finish whilst you know two points separating us in third place is tight and we could have ended up in third like i say but i think with one season out the way it's now time to push and clear out some of this dead wood Right then guys, so we're back for the start of season two a little bit earlier than anticipated as the Qatar World Cup is in the winter this season, so all the games have been brought forward. It's now the 24th of July and we've got our game against Aberdeen. We have played one game in the Europa Conference League and we've won that one 5-0 in the first leg, so it's looking likely that we're going to progress into the next qualifying stage there. When we look at the finances, we've still got half a million pounds left to play with and 45% of our transfer revenue is now coming in. Wage budget-wise, we've got 103k and we're spending 83 and overall balance 3.3 million with no debt. That's absolutely right, no debt, so we're looking good there. Transfers wise then we've had a lot of players leave this time round. The first player to go was Aaron McInef. He has gone off to Ross County. Decent player. Only played four times since last season so we've let him go for 10k. And then Jamie Walker left us on a free transfer. Didn't want to renew his contract and has gone off to Dundee. Craig Halkett also joined him. Now this guy would, I would have liked to have kept. 27 year old. Still got a lot of playing time ahead of him. Played 10 times since last season. And again didn't want to stay with us and he also went to Dundee. Craig Gordon retired, so we took him on as a goalkeeping coach. His goalkeeping attributes, though, as far as coaching goes, not great. Shot stopping, 12. Distribution, 10. And handling, 7. A lot of work to do there as we look to push him on now to the next stage in his career. But coming in then, the first player through the door is Zandi. Now, he joins us from Nottingham Forest for 36k. After they spent 200k on him last season. He only played three times in the Skybet Championship. Very quick, 17 acceleration, 16 pace. Dribbling, finishing first touch, okay. Technically, he's not the best, but he's only a squad option. That is it. You know, this guy won't be an out-and-out -out starter, and he just offers a different option out on the left and right-hand side. 
Another player that's also going to offer options on the left and right hand side is Tom Barcuse, and now 29 year old South African. Got him on a free transfer from Preston. He played 23 times in the Sky Bear Championship last season, scoring four goals. And tactically, I have changed it up a little bit. So we're going to play higher attacking midfielders. And he can feature behind the striker or in that front position as well. Again, he's a decent squad option. More likely to start than Zande, as his current ability is three and a half star and he's playing to his full potential. Now, a player that I've just brought in just as a real depth option is Benny Ashley Seal. Now, his current ability is two-star, potential ability is three-star. He's awful to look at attributes-wise. Now, he does score goals for his other saves that I've had, so I've given him a go. He didn't even play a game for Northampton in League 2 last season, so this guy may not even get a game for us. But I've brought him in. We'll see what he can do. He's just going to warm up the bench at just over a grand a week. It's not the end of the world. Luke Dreher also joins on a free transfer from Crystal Palace, where he played nine games in the Premier League last season. Not bad going at all. All-rounded player and he's going to be a starter within the midfield. 23-year-old. Now he's got plenty more to give and he's going to develop nicely should he get plenty of game time. Sam Byron was another player through the door. 28-year-old Englishman. Very good all-rounded player. Current ability four-star as well. And he joined us for 275k from Norwich. Hasn't played a game in two seasons. That would be my one concern. They've made a hefty loss on him now. And like I say, just over a quarter of a million pounds spent. Can play left and right, predominantly on that right-hand side. Then I've brought in a couple of attacking options with Kun Temenyuskov. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. I'm probably never going to call him that again. Let's just call him Kun. That's it. So he's joined us for 40k from Leeds where he was out on loan last season in the Spanish lower leagues where he played 36 times, 11 goals, 5 assists for real Iran. So yeah, is, is, is he prolific? No. Is he going to be? Could be. Acceleration 14, pace 14 as well. Finishing and composure both 12. 22-year-old Bulgarian. He's been capped twice. Currently valued at 1.6 million. It was worth a go. And then Liam Cullen, more of an all-rounded striker. You know, he can play behind the strikes as well. He is unconvincing in that role. More accomplished out on the right-hand side should we want to play him there. Current ability three-star, potential ability four-star. Got him for 325k from Swansea. So we've spent decent money on him. He played 13 times the season before last in the championship. So we'll just see how he gets on this season. So looking at me starting 11 then, we're going to play a 4-2-4. I did say that we were probably going to push players further forward. But in goal... I've brought in Harry Stone from the reserves. Now, he was out on loan last season. He was at Partick Vissel where he played 37 times, conceded 35 and kept 10 clean sheets. Now, this guy's highly regarded amongst the Hearts faithful. And for me, I think it's worth giving him a go. couple of seasons in, so he develops. He's definitely going to be the number one for this season. And like I say, if he develops like I expect him to, potential ability is five star, then he'll be the number one for the majority of this save. So looking at our starting 11 anyway, we've got Stone in goal, Kingsley, Harrin, Suta and Byram at the back with Dreher and Devlin in the middle, Ginelli and Barcusen out wide and then Boyce and Kun up front, that is it, so we'll see how we get on there. Squad death wise then, Boyce is still the best striker at the club, Ginelli is still the best out on both sides with Barcusen, similar to him as well. Devlin, the best player in the midfield, with Byram out on both sides. Suta is comfortably the best centre back at the club and then Stewart and Stone fighting out for that number one jersey. Competitions-wise, we've got the Scottish Premiership, the Europa Conference League, Scottish Cup and Premier Sports Cup. Now, ideally for me, I want to be getting to a cup final this season. Definitely want to be challenging for a top three finish in the league. That's the main thing for us. And the Europa Conference League is just for the journey. So yes, that is it. What we're going to do is we're going to move forward to the end of Season 2, where hopefully we've improved on last season's performance. So season two is down then, guys, and it's been massive for us. 81 points on the board, a third place finish. 81 points, absolutely incredible, as we finished 13 points clear of Hibs in fourth place. And we've absolutely smashed our total of last season. So looking at the league table then, we played 38 games, won 25, drew 6, lost 7. Who did we lose to? So we lost 1-0 to Hibs in there, 2-0 to Celtic, and we got smashed twice by Rangers, 4-0, so absolutely done there. 86 goals scored, 47 conceded, 39 goal difference, 81 points on the board. And like I say, 81 points this season against 53 the season before. So we've well and truly done it this time round. Looking at the past positions, and we've basically been sat in third place for the majority of the season. We were up to second for a couple of games. We then lost 2-0 to Celtic, which knocked us down to third. Getting back up into second place with a 4-1 victory over Dundee United. But then drawn 2-2 with Hibs basically put us into third place, which is where we stayed. Competitions wise then, like I say, a third place finish in the league. We didn't even manage to get past the qualifying rounds of the Europa Conference League as we were knocked out by Slavia Prague in the fourth round. Uh, that is not great. So the European journey never really happened for us. In the Scottish Cup though, we were runner-up. Celtic, there you go, 2-1. 
absolutely battered as per you know it's going to be Celtic and Rangers every single season but in the Premier Sports Cup we're knocked out in the second round by Dundee that is poor finances wise then this coming transfer window we've got 897k to spend I'm quite disappointed in that considering we've just had a third place finish we've got 92k to spend we're currently spending 82 and then looking at debts and loans we've got nothing fantastic and our overall balance is 2.1 million so still in a good financial place Dynamics wise then, Team Cohesion Club atmosphere and Magio support is all very good. Looking at the top influencers then, anybody opposes? Now I've got 11 players of supporters, 10 players that have no real opinion of us, nobody opposes which is good. And I've now got 3 team leaders again which is Sutar, Smith and Kingsley. So looking at the club vision and I've got a B- minus for the season and what is the expectation for the end of next season. So to qualify for the Europa Conference League again and to reach the group stages as a bare minimum in the Europa League. I can take that and we just continue to be the best of the rest as well. So look at the player stats then, Kuna scored 28 goals this season, what an absolute boss man, he scores 21 in the league, 28 in all competitions, be interesting to see how he got on in comparison to the other players in the league. So he actually finished in second place, Batshuayi, what is he doing in the SPL, scoring 31 goals last season for Celtic, actually the next three players behind Batshuayi, Kun, Boyce and Bakhusen, 21, 18 and 15 goals this season. So we have scored plenty of goals, love that. Most dribbles made as well, Bakhusen in there with 150. Josh Gianelli with 130 in second place. Looking at clean sheets wise then, how did Stone do? Third with 12 clean sheets this season. Has he developed? He's developing nicely, is Harry Stone. Currently valued at 2.2 million, 6.8 million now. He's been capped three times for the Scottish under-21s. Definitely going to get capped throughout this save. So looking at the highest average rating then, Stephen Kingsley got a 7.33, most assists by Kuzan with 17, best pass completion with Sutau with 99%, most player of the match awards, Kun with 7, most yellow cards, Devlin and Smith with 16 apiece, and most red cards, Harron and Michael Smith with one red card apiece. Team stats wise then, 86 goals this season, which is incredible going, but when you've seen our goal scorers then, it's no surprise, that was the third best. Goals conceded, 47, which is the fourth best. Yellow cards, 88, which is the third worst. And red cards, 2, which is the sixth worst. Again, Tyne Castle delivering, just under 19,000, which is the third best attendance in the league. So finally then, looking at this squad depth, you know, Liam Boyce and Cun up front, both three and a half star strikers, they're doing a job for us. Ginelli, how did Zandi get on? Made 14 starts, 8 goals, 19 substitute appearances as well, so he was ever present amongst the squad. In the midfield, Devlin still doing the business. Sam Byram, how did he get on this season? So 27 starts in the league, an average rating of a 7.07, so he's done bits for us as well. Now John Sutar, still the best player in the centre of defence as well, Byram out on that right hand side, Harry Stone in goal, but John Sutar, should we try and tie him down to a new contract? Oh, he wants to as well, he's not being happy at the club, let's get that removed quick, go. Let's look at moving that release clause, get out of there, and 5.5k, four years, tie him down. Yeah, we'll do it. I'm not even going to aggle. There we go. So John Suta should be staying at the club. The main man was wanting to go. We've got rid of a release clause as well. So absolutely buzzing with that. So there we go then, guys. What we're going to do is we're going to move forward to the start of season three, get that transfer window out of the way. We've only got around about a million pounds to spend. But yeah, we should still be able to do some good business. Right, so what a transfer window we have just had at Hearts. Honestly, incredible. When we look at the finances... I've got just under a million pound left to spend. I'm spending a little bit over the wage budget. I'll be able to balance that out in due course. We've got 6.4 million in the overall balance. Debt and loans, nothing at all. Transfer debt, yes, 3.6 million. Not worried about that as we've got no net debt. Profit and loss for this month were minus 1 million pounds. Again, nothing to worry about with the money that we've got left over. But all of our transfers have been funded by Josh Ginelli going off to Bristol City. Now, £8 million they paid for him. They're in the Championship. Yes, he played well for us last season. 30 games, 6 goals, 9 assists. 2 player to match performances. But £8 million. Absolutely incredible money for Ginelli. Attributes-wise, isn't that good a 26-year-old? I can't see him pushing on much more. He's a good player, don't get me wrong. He's a good player for Hearts. But for £8 million, they could have spent it on someone much better. But more fool them really, you know, I'm not complaining, not at all, as Benny Ashley Seal has also gone off to Tranmere, 16k, he went out on loan to Rochdale last season, played 10 times. It was a guy that I just brought in because he'd scored goals for me in previous saves I'd done at lower level, it never worked out at heart, attributes wise, absolutely shite, so away he goes. And then another player to go was Gary McKay, Stephen, now he's gone off to Arizona Phoenix, 32 year old, I know he's capped twice by Scotland, but... 
he only played three times his last season. He's already played more against the Phoenix anyway. So, Gary McKay Stevens gone. So coming in then, the first player through the doors for Kundo Kalidio. Now he has joined us on a free transfer from Inter Milan. He was out on loan last season at Crotone in Sarri B. 24 games, 3 goals. He's not a prolific goal scorer by the look of it here. Playing 70 times and only scoring 6 goals as a striker. Now that's predominantly where we're going to play him. Finishing 14, composure 13. Pace and acceleration also 14. Decent player attributes, wife for somebody a 23 year old, currently valued 2.1 million, he comes in, free transfer, he's another option up top, and he's definitely better than Ashley Seal who's just left us. Daniel Ballard joins us from Arsenal, again on a free transfer, 23 year old, Northern Irish, international 12 caps, playing as a centre back, now heading, a mark and tackling all decent, that mark and a 12, could be a little bit better, mentally good, Acceleration wise, out of all of his attributes, worries me at a nine. However, I'm going to play a back three this season. I'll show you the tactic shortly. So he's probably going to play out on the left hand side of the back three. But like I say, got him from Arsenal. He was out on loan the season before at Millwall. 37 games in the Championship, a 6.94 rating. Very good centre back, 23 year old. Just that acceleration worries us. Another centre-back that we've brought in, and I can't believe I've managed to get this guy at the club, Leo Ostergaard. Now, when i do my Barcelona rebuild, I think he was in the second to last season, so the fourth season in. Ostergaard joined us at Barcelona, and he was absolutely incredible. Now, mentally very good. Technically as well, you know, head and mark and tackling are the things I talk about all the time. They're the three key attributes for a central defender, in my opinion. If he can do them, everything else falls into place. And he can. 23-year-old Norwegian, two caps. Current ability, three and a half stars. Potential ability, four stars. And we got him from AC Milan for 475k after they spent 750 on him the season before. Now, Reese Devine, a player that I've brought in from, he wasn't Manchester United, but we got him from West Ham on a free transfer. Didn't play a game last season. He is a depth option out on that left-hand side. Cross and dribbling, 15 and 12. Acceleration and pace ball 13 decent player decent depth option and then Dauda Peters joins us from Juve £1 million we spent big money on him big money in comparison to what we've been spending before that he played one time in the Serie A last season and he's been on loan went out to standard Sampdoria as well was out there but didn't really do too much yes at standard he played 27 times 3 goals 2 assists but a very good player to come in in my central midfield can play deeper as well as that anchorman role the 24 year old Guinean 5 caps as well current ability 3.5 star potential ability 4 star Peters the man in the central midfield and then looking at me tactic and the way I'm going to play. So we're going to play a three at the back. I think we've now got three quality centre-backs in Ballard, Ostergaard and Suta. Stone, my goalkeeper, is still going to be the number one. I've got Kingsley and Byram out wide. So they're going to play as my wing-backs with Peters and Banningheim in the middle. Pollock, a player that I've brought through my youth system. Really good player. 11.25 million he's valued at. And we've got teams that actually want him at that as well. Everton, Newcastle and West Ham. I had an £11 million offer coming from Wolves and I rejected it. Because I think this guy, if we can playing behind the strikers and that's the way I go for the rest of the save he's going to be very good indeed and I've got Boyce and Cun up front we're playing that tick attacker positive mentality and we're going to go for it with this one this season it's a bit extravagant for the Scottish League don't get me wrong you know we started off with a 4-4-2 and now playing a 5-2-1-2 but I think with the team that we've got that's the right formation to go with Competitions wise, we've got plenty to play for in this one. We've got the Scottish Premier League, the Europa League. Even if we don't get out of the playoff, that's where we start on the 24th of the 8th. Then we're going to drop into the Europa Conference League. I'm happy either way. Obviously, the money's better than the Europa League, and the stature and reputation building is much better for us if we're wanting to move on. However, you know, worst case scenario, we drop out in the playoff, we're going to be playing in the Conference League anyway. We've then got the Scottish Cup and the Premier Sports Cup as well. So we can start off with a game against Hamilton there. Hopefully, we can push on in the Cups this season. Squad dynamics wise, then Team Cohesion is good, and club atmosphere and manager support is very good. Barry McKay wants to start more games. We'll see how he gets on. Now we've got that position behind the strikers. Anybody opposes? No, I've got 10 players that have no real opinion, but 14 player supporters. All three of my team leaders are on side as well. And then looking at the squad depth, out on them left and right hand sides, probably the weakest area. I've only got Kingsley and Divine who can play out there, but everywhere else is stacked. Now I've got Pollock. I say he's probably going to be the main man to develop throughout this season. Devlin Peters in the middle. Harry Stone, you know, is still progressing nicely. And like I say, as long as he continues to develop like this, he will have a Scottish cap before the end of the save. So looking at the season preview then, we're 33 to 1 to win the league. We're expected in the third place finish, Hibs 50 to 1 just behind us. We haven't actually got any players in the Media Dream 11. 
that doesn't worry me if I'm completely honest. I think we'll develop those players throughout the season and over the next coming seasons as well. And I'd certainly have a player or two in there by the end of this. New managers coming in then. Van Bronckhorst starts at Rangers. Stuart Taylor at Hamilton. Graham Murty joins Hibbs. David Hopkin at Motherwell coming from air. So yes, Van Bronckhorst then taking over at Rangers as it is now. And finally then, looking at the club vision. So the expectation for this season is just to be competitive in the Europa League, qualify for the Europa Conference League, so basically a top five finish in the league, reach the quarterfinals and bare minimums in both Scottish Cups. So there we go then, guys. What we're going to do now is we're going to move forward to the end of Season 3, where I'm extremely excited after the team that we've assembled to see if we can have some silverware at the end of it. Right then, guys. So the end of Season 3, and it's been a good one for us. You can see as we finished in second place... Two points clear of Celtic, Rangers boss in the league, 11 points clear. But we've managed to break into the top two, and in fairness, you know, three seasons in, I think we've overplayed it there, I really do. 77 points on the board, two points clear, and our last five games have been an absolute shambles in the league. Draws against Hibbs, St. Johnson and Celtic, all nil nils. Not a goal scored, I suppose not a goal conceded, neither. But yes, yeah, Celtic cannot be happy with that third place finish. As we've got Champions League football next season, that's absolutely incredible. As we've already managed to break into the top two. Rangers, like I say, 88 points on the ball. But when we look at our performance, 38 played, 22 wins, 11 draws, too many games draw. But then we did draw the last three games of the season. Five defeats, that's the difference between us and Celtic. Obviously, they lost nine games. 64 goals scored, certainly isn't enough. But only 36 goals conceded. That's less than a goal a game and I will take that. And then plus 28 goal difference overall. It'd be interesting to see our performance across the league. So there we go. And we look at it then. Rangers in top spot. Let's get rid of these two. They were open from last time round. We actually managed to be in top spot midway through the season. So we went top spot with a 1-0 victory over Motherwell. All it had to draw 3-3 with Ross County. And then draw 1-1 with St. Johnson. And that's basically what lost us it. We puck up a 1-0 victory against Hamilton. 1-1 with Rangers. Decent result there. But then we draw 1-1 one, one, with Dundee, so there's far too many draws. You can see that spell there. Not great for us. Competitions-wise, though, the first thing I can see is we have won two Cups. We've won the Scottish Cup. Let's have a look at that one. A 4-1 victory over Ross County. What are Ross County doing in the final? But performance-wise there, a goal from Barcus and Pollock, Kingsley and Kun as well. I'm going to try and pronounce his second name now. Temen Zuskov. We'll go with that. Before we conceded a 94th minute goal. We had 21 shots, 8 on target. 62% possession now. Loving this tactic. And then we won the Premier Sports Cup again. 2-1 against Dundee this time round. 15 shots, 6 on target. 68% possession. We're certainly dominating with the ball. And Kun with 2 goals on 36 and 72. We actually went a goal down in 8 minutes through right. So we've had a fantastic season. We've had a second place finish in the league. We've won both domestic cups. We didn't have a great Europa League. Third place finish in the group. But then we were knocked out in the semi-final by Leeds. Leeds actually winning it 2-1 in extra time against Atalanta. Let's have a look at that semi-final. We're beaten 5-3 on aggregate. We lost 3-1 at home and that done us there. Atalanta 2-1 against Bilbao. So we got to the semi-final in the Conference League as well. Finances wise then we've got 3.1 million to spend in this upcoming transfer window. 75% of transfer revenue is now being made to us. We've got 120k to spend on wage budget with 5k under that. We've got 12 million pound in the overall balance. Finances looking extremely good at the minute. Dynamics wise and across the board is very good. Team keys and club atmosphere and support all the same. With lots of players wanting more playing time. We'll have a look at that through the summer. As far as support goes then, John Sutar opposes us. I've got two players that oppose us actually. Sutar and Harin. I've got 11 players to support us. 11 players that I have no real opinion of us. What's going on then? So Sutar. Unhappy that the coaching team was not improved. Harin wants to start more games. He just wants to leave playing in a weaker role. But nobody agrees with any of the complaints, so that's, so that's fine. I haven't got a mutiny on my hands as it stands. So lastly then, looking at the player stats, Kun got 30 goals this season. How did he perform in the league? Let's have a look. Player overview then. So Batshuayi with 23 goals. Kun's down with 15 goals in the league in fourth place. And there's nobody else there in the goals. What about assists? Nobody in the top 10 for assists, neither. Most tackles won, though. Reese Devine with 99. Five clear of Bell and Pierce. High Stafford Drayton then was come with a 7.31. Most assists was Devine, but that's across all competitions. So as we've seen, seven in the league, 
three in the Scottish Cup, six in the Europa Conference League, and three in the full Europa League as well. So, so 19 assists for Divine, quality player he is. Best pass completion is Suto with 98%. Most player of the match awards was Kun with 9, most yellow cards was Benarine with 17, and most red cards was 3 for Peters. Wow, so was that in all competitions? So all three of them being in the Premier League as well, that is shocking. Which makes us the worst. We've got six red cards in all competitions. Looking at the rest of the team stats then, 64 goals scored third best, 36 goals conceded third best. Yellow cards wise, 82, which is the second worst. Like I say, six red cards. I probably think that's the highest I've ever had across a season. And average attendance, Tynecastle again delivering just over 19,000. So season three has been a success. You know, the finances, obviously, I would have expected more from our performance. But still, 3.1 million to spend this coming transfer window is exciting. Lastly, though, I do want to see how everybody else got on for goals. So, Kun with 30 across all competitions. Kalido with 20. I like that. 20 goals from Kalido has just joined us. 7 in the league, though. And 7 in the Europa League. He got 12 across both European competitions, though. Which isn't bad going. Barkusen with 15. Finley with 9. How did Boyce get on? So, Boyce only played 12 times and scored 7 goals. Looks like he's injured, though. He's been out since the 7th of October with damaged cruciate ligaments. So, yeah, he's basically missed the majority of the season. And he scored 7 in 12, so not bad from Boyce, neither. So, there we go then, guys. That's this season over. What we're going to do now is we're going to move forward through the transfer window of Season 4. And hopefully, we've taken another step to being the top two again, I would say. I'm not overly worried about Season 4 trying to win the league, but definitely want to close the gap between us and Rangers while keeping Celtic in third place. Right, so we've had another strong transfer window. Season 4 is looking good again. As we look at the finances, 2.9 million in the transfer budget. We've got 152k in the wage budget. We're currently spending 148. We could be spending up to 155k. Obviously, if that does happen, then I will readjust the budgets again. Overall balance is now 60 million pounds. It's we've had a decent rise there. And debt and loan, yeah, we've got a bit of transfer debt, 3.9 million, but no net debt overall. So looking at players that have left the club then, Tom Barkusen, he's gone to Victoria's Plain in Czech Republic. For 5.5 million, he played 31 times his last season, 8 goals, 5 assists. He's had a decent career with his unfairness as Barkusen. But yeah, 5.5 million for a player that we got on a free transfer. And now he is the grand old age of 31. We've done well to cash in on him there. Another player to go was Barry McKay. We basically let him go for 23k. He played 3 times his last season and he's gone off to Barnsley. And then Liam Cullen has gone off to Hull. So he bought him for 325k. I was expecting big things from this guy. He played 25 times, scored 5 goals. The season after, so last season, he played 15 times, scored 3 goals, 2 assists. He was never going to feature now. You know, up front, we've got some decent options, which we'll go through shortly. Yes, he's a very good all-round player. But again, I think we've just got better options. So coming in first then on a free transfer is Ben Williamson. Now he joined us from Rangers. He was out on loan last season at Partick Thistle. 34 appearances, 2 goals, 1 assist. And he's decent. You know, he's going to play in the centre of midfield. Can also play where Pollock is just behind the strikers. But yeah, aggression 16, bravery 18. He's not afraid to get stuck in. And his other attribute, you know, obviously don't ask him to take a long throw at three, but he'll do a decent job for us. A 22-year-old is going to develop nicely as well. As you can see, his potential ability, 3.5 star. Kofi Gigi has joined us, 31-year-old Ivorian, six caps. We bought him for 375k from Brentford. They spent 1.1 million on him from Torino. He didn't play any games in the Premier League for them last season. And at 31-year-old, you know, he's probably one of the older players that I've brought. But I've brought him in just to play as a centre-back, as a bit of cover. He may not play too many games. Heading 14, marking 13, tackling 15. Strength, probably my only worry at 12. But again, you know, he's just there as a depth option. I then spent 1.3 million on Emmanuel Valeri. So he's 25 year old Italian. Like I say, 1.3 million from Napoli. That's exactly what they spent on him. He played nine times for them over two seasons in the Serie A. So, you know, he's got some top tier experience, but going to play out on that left hand side, predominantly there. Cross and dribbling 13, acceleration and pace ball 13 as well. So he's a solid player with his potential ability going to be three and a half star and now valued at 3.1 million. And I look to strengthen out on that right-hand side as I've brought in Emil Kraft. Now, this says a little bit about the difference in the rebuilds. Now, when I had the Newcastle rebuild, I couldn't get this guy out of the club quick enough. And he's... <laughs> And at heart, he's looking like a quality player. At 30-year-old now, yes, I have spent some money on him, 675k. He played six times in Japan last season. But he'll do a really good job for us, I think. Current ability and potential ability is three and a half star. 
solid all-round right back. Dribbling, 9, crossing 11, it's not as high as I would want, but he's another decent option out there, and he's still valued at up to 850k, and that is at the minute. If he gets plenty of game time, you know, when he's 31 next season, there'll be an opportunity maybe to cash in on him. And then finally, a big transfer for the club, well, a loan deal anyway. We've brought in Troy Parrott, 22-year-old Irishman, nine caps, four goals. He was on loan last season at Blackpool from Tottenham. He played 17 times, seven goals, four assists. The goal scoring does worry us because I'm expecting plenty of goals from this guy. Nothing really stands out at the minute. Potential ability though, four and a half star. But he's finishing and composure both for only 12. Yes, he's got a lot more to develop and I'm hoping that's going to be this season with us. So looking at the squad dynamics then, team cohesion and club atmosphere, very good. Magic support's good. Issues now, I've just got Dreyer who feels like he's been treated unfairly by us. I've transfer listed him, nobody's interested. I've got 16 players that agree with how poorly I've treated him as well. So top influencers wise then, I've got no players that oppose us. Now I've got 10 players that support us, 14 players that have no real opinion of us. But Sutar, he might not be on my side, but he's not against us. Looking at the tactic for this season, then we're going to start with Stone and Goal. Now, I did say this guy was going to get an international call-up. He's been capped 13 times by Scotland, so he is now their number one. He's developing nicely. Still got a lot more to give here, though, but a 22-year-old is only going to push on. At the back, I've got Ballard, Ostergaard and Suter with Divine and Kraft out wide. Peters and Banningheim in the middle with Pollock. Again, another player that is developing nicely. Currently valued up to 17.5 million. And a player, a 20-year-old, I'd expect to see capped over the next couple of seasons. And then up front, we've got Cohn and Troy Parrott. So that's my starting 11. Obviously, there's some players that are mincing about on the fringes. But yeah, as the starting 11 goes, that is a great team. So competitions-wise this season, then we've got the Premiership, the UEFA Champions League, where we take on PSV, Scottish Cup and the Premier Sports Cup as well. Both competitions that we are the holders of, which I'd like to do again. Naturally, if we go crashing out of the Champions League at this stage against PSV, we'll drop down into the Europa League. So there's still an opportunity for us to push on in Europe. And then finally, then looking at the season preview, we're expected a third place finish. Celtic 5-4, Rangers 11-10 odds. There you go. We've still nobody in the media dream 11 neither. So, you know, no changes there. I still think we've got quality players though. That could fit into that dream 11, just not this season. But the only way they're going to get in there is by pushing forward another season. So what we're going to do is we're going to move forward to the end of season four, where hopefully we've had a similar performance to that of last season. So four seasons in and we have won the SPL in the most dramatic of circumstances as we've finished equal on points with Celtic, 79 points apiece, plus 31 goal difference as well. That is the big thing. Let's just have a look. So we both played 38 games, both won 24, both drew 7, both lost 7. We scored 63 goals, they scored 62. However, we conceded 32 and they conceded 31. Plus 31 goal difference apiece, 79 points on the board. And we've ended up finishing top spot. So Champions League football again for us next season. When we have a look at our past positions then. So there you go. Deserved winners. As we were down into second spot on game day two. But then went back top of the league with a 2-0 victory over Livingston. Running all the way through. But we actually lost 3-1 against Celtic on the last game of the season. And that could have cost us. Like what did we get? Did we lose there? We lost 3-1. If they scored another goal or we hadn't scored, then that would have been it. We would have ended up losing out on goal difference. So competitions-wise then, we did win the Premiership. How did we get on in the Champions League? So let's have a look. Did we get to the group stages first of all? So yes, we did. There you go. Group E, where we finished on zero points, played six, lost six, got absolutely smashed, scored three goals, conceded 20, minus 17 goal difference. We were well and truly done there. We got slapped about. But it doesn't matter because the revenue that we'll have received from playing in the Champions League just, you know, outweighs any of that. The amount of money that we were getting per game. But look at the rest of our performance in the competition. We were knocked out in the quarterfinal by Aberdeen. But we did win the Premier Sports Cup 3-1 in extra time against Celtic. We scored in 120 minutes than 121 minutes. Celtic were going to feel hard done by then. However, we were the better team. 16 shots, 8 on target, 64% possession. Look at the finances then, we've got £22 million to spend in this transfer budget, we're going to get 100% of transfer revenue, wage budget's 180 k and we're spending 144 overall balance is now £24 million. now after I left you after the start of season 4, I did have a player leave, so Leo Ostergaard went off to Wolfsburg for £8.5 million. now he went off to them as that was his minimum release clause, £8.5 million. so I couldn't stop him going, 
Now, we did bring him in for next to nothing, half a million pounds. And when you look at him, he's a very good player. Probably one of the best players at the club. But we had to let him go. Like I say, his release clause was met, so he went off to Wolfsburg. But we did bring in Anthony Gordon. Now, he was a player that I was waiting to get over the line before the season started. He joined us for 1.5 million from Everton. 33 appearances for us this season, 7 goals. So, not a bad turnaround for a player that's 24. Currently, 3.5 star. Now, valued at 9.4 million as well. Decent all-round player as well and just plays behind the striker. So looking at squad dynamics then, team cohesion is excellent, club atmosphere is good and managerial support is excellent. I've got two players that want to leave, Liam Boyce, he'll be leaving us this season and so will Luke Dreyer, he's going to be leaving us on a free transfer. Good player, but again, he's never featured. And then when we look at top influencers, I've got 21 players to support us, Dreyer is the only one that doesn't, but he's got no real opinion of us. And then finally, looking at the player stats then, so Kuhn was the top goal scorer for us with 32 goals, how did he get on in the league? So he's actually the top goal scorer in the league as well with 26 goals this season. Batshuayi had a poor season with 12 goals. Troy Parrott in there with 12 goals as well. How did Troy Parrott get on? So he scored 15 goals in all competitions. Kun also had the highest average rating with a 7.21. Most assists was divine with 15. Best pass completion was suited at 98%. Most player of the match awards was Kun with 9. Most yellow cards was Kraft with 14. And most red cards, we had plenty there. Devlin, Banningheim, Boyce and Cammy Logan with one apiece. Team stats wise then we scored 63 goals which is the best in the league. We conceded 32 which was the third best. Yellow cards wise we had 84 which is the second worst. And one red card which was the third best. So most of those yellow cards coming in other competitions. And again just under 20,000 for the average attendance which was third best. So where do we improve this season then really? Like you know we've got plenty of money to spend in a transfer window. But do I need to go out and spend big? That wing back left looks quite light, but we've got Valeri Kingsley and Divine. Divine has been quality for us since joining. Out on the right hand side, we've got Kraft and Byron. They're both cracking on a bit now, so it may be there. With Ostergaard going, I'm definitely going to need to add some more depth at centre back. Goalkeeper wise, I'm happy. What about Pollock though? He's been capped. There you go. So 20 year old now, and he's been capped one time by Scotland. He's going to be a quality player. How do he get on this season? 36 appearances, one goal. The season before though, 32 appearances, five goals, six assists. So not a great season for him this season. Season and a 6.76 rating as well. So looking at the squad then, yeah, it's definitely at the back. Nothing really needs to be done up front. However, Troy Parrott is leaving us and Liam Boyce is gone as well. So maybe need to bring another player in up there as well. So what we're going to do then, guys, we're going to move forward now through into season five, get that transfer window out of the way and hopefully... I haven't gone overboard and spent all the money. I probably will have done now, knowing me. But I've improved that squad as we look to push on in the Champions League. Right then guys, so that is our last transfer window down. I just quickly want to go through the finances. I didn't spend the money like I said I probably wasn't going to. £50 million we've still got left in the transfer budget. We started off with a £20 million transfer budget, so... You know, 5 million spent this season. Wage budget, 180k. We now spend 174k. And the overall balance is 25 million. So looking at the players that have left then, Facundo Calidio has gone off to Racing Club for 7.25 million. 8.25 million with add-ons. Now, last season, he played 12 times for us. Three goals, two assists, two player to match performances. We got him on a free transfer, so I'll take over £8 million for him. Yes, he's, he looks like a decent player for the Scottish Leagues, but, you know, getting that kind of money for him, I couldn't say no to that, especially when he could be reinvested into the club. Kofi Gigi, he has gone off to Sunderland for 63k now he read. Quite a substantial loss on this guy, 375k I spent on him last season. 21 appearances, one goal, one player to match performance. Again, you know, he was cracking on a bit now, this guy, 32-year-old, and he was only there as a squad death option anyway, so when Sunderland coming with the offer, I took it. So coming in then, Courtney Hobbs is the first player to join us. He joins us from Bournemouth. He joined them from Aston Villa for 1.9 million, didn't play any games in the Premier League last season, and he left on a free transfer, so he brought him in. A squad depth option for us, you know, we need those options at the back. When I'm playing three centre-backs anyway, you know, I do need the rotation. So heading 15, marking 13, tackling 14, strength 15. Yes, he's 30-year-old, so he's at the top end of his career again. But like I say, on a free transfer from Bournemouth, a team that were in the Premier League last season. Whilst he didn't play there, he was still at the club, so we've brought him in. Another player joining us from Bournemouth then is Reese Oxford. Now, we got him on a free transfer as well after they spent £3.1 million on him. Same as how he really didn't play a game last season. So, we've brought him in to play predominantly as a centre-back. Heading, mark and tackling, OK. That's heading at 11, especially when he's six foot three, Isn't ideal. But this guy, they're expecting big things from him when he was at West Ham. He ended up going to Oisberg for £1.4 And he hasn't really fulfilled his potential. But we've brought him in. Hopefully, he can do a job for us. 
So we did actually spend some money then on Cesar Gelabert. Now he joined us from AC Milan for four million pounds. Didn't play a game in the Serie A last season. Played one the season before. Started out his career at Real Madrid. Played some games in their B team. But for me, he's a player that can play behind the strikers. Now Pollock may drop a bit deeper into the central midfield. Or they can rotate between them. But a decent player. 17 flair. Long shots 12. I would have liked that to have been a little bit tight. Because I want my player behind the strikers to pull the trigger a bit more. But a decent player. £4.8 million. Like I say, not a bad deal for us. When we're spending £4 million up front. And then the last player through the door doesn't need any introduction, Troy Parrott. He tore it up last season, 12 goals in 33 starts and helped guide us to the Premier League title. So yeah, Troy Parrott is back with us again. However, we have spent £1.5 million to bring him on loan. So looking at the club vision then, has anything really changed since we won the league last season? So they expect us to reach the playoffs of the Champions League. We're going to do that anyway, as that's where we start. To qualify for the Europa Conference League. So they're only expecting the top five finish again. Scottish Cup is to reach the semi-final. And that's exactly the same in the Scottish League Cup as well. So we can do that. And then just to carry on becoming recognised as the best of the rest. Even all the way to like 29-30 season. They don't want us to be pushing for the league title again. So they think it was just a one-off. So it'll be interesting to see. When we look at dynamics then, team cohesion good, club atmosphere very good, and managerial support very good, no team issues, and does everybody support us? Now I've now got 13 players that have support us, 9 players that have no real opinion, but nobody opposes us. And looking at the competitions for this season then, so we've got the Scottish Premier League, but we've got the Champions League as well. Now realistically for me, with it being our last season, I would like to be in the Europa League, you know, so we can play our games in the group stages. We'll be entered into that on the 16th and the 9th, but a third place finish should be ideal for us just to pick up some points, I suppose, after getting absolutely slapped about last season. But yeah, if we can get third place and then move on into the Europa League, that will be good for us as well. We've then got the Scottish Cup and the Premier Sports Cup as well, so an opportunity there for some more silverware. Looking at the season preview then, we're expected a third place finish again. We've got no players in the Media Dream 11, that's quite disappointing. I was expecting somebody to have snuck the way in, but Rangers evens to win the league. And then finally we look at the tactic for this season. So we're going to go with Stone in goal, House, Ballard and Suter at the back, Divine and Kraft out wide, Pollock and Peters in the middle. Like I say, Pollock going to drop a bit deeper as Jellibert takes that place behind the strikers of Parrott and Kunz. So there we go then guys, our last season in charge of heart. So hopefully we can retain our league crown and push on in Europe a win in a Champions League just one victory would be nice so let's give it a go right so this is it then guys the end of season 5 and by the look of it yeah we haven't gone out in a blaze of glory we've absolutely bottled it 11 points behind Celtic 9 points behind Rangers when you look at our form there we drew our last 4 games that's really poor again look at the league table or like I say 3rd place finish 38 games played 18 wins 15 draws that's the highest draws in the league 5 defeats which I think is the lowest it is so we lost the fewest games in the league 15 draws though there 65 goals scored 39 conceded 26 goal difference 69 points on the board and that formed towards the end so we lost 3-1 to Aberdeen 0-0 draw with Rangers 2-2 draw with St Mirren 2-2 with Celtic and 1-1 with Hibs on the last game of the season wouldn't have made any difference however Aberdeen were chasing us on 68 points they won 4 their last 5 games Past positions wise then we've basically been sat in third place for the majority of the season, dropped down to fourth, middle of the season there with a 0-0 draw at home to Rangers but yeah we've just been sat in third place all the way through. Looking at Celtic top spot, Rangers second spot, not been much change within the top three throughout the season. Competitions wise then like I say a third place finish in the Sins Premiership, we got a third place finish in the Champions League, six points on the board which got us in to the Europa League where we were knocked out in the quarterfinals by Newcastle United, I wonder what happened there, let's have a look, so Newcastle actually won the Europa League 1-0 in extra time but did we get smashed by them, was it the quarterfinal we went out, yes we got beat. 3-1 on the night, 4-1 on aggregates, so yeah we got well and truly pounded. We did win the Scottish Cup, I suppose. That's the bonus. A 1-0 victory at Celtic. So we're there at Hamden Park. Alvarez with a goal on 81 minutes. Getting us the win there. Fantastic stuff. And then in the Premier Sports Cup, we were knocked out in the quarterfinal by Aberdeen. So, yeah, a bit mixed there. We did win some silverware though, and that's the big thing. Finances-wise and how we're looking, we've got £34 million in the overall balance. £19 million to spend in this transfer budget. 100% of transfer revenue being given to as well. 310k wage budget. And we're spending 170 there. And debts and loans. We've still got no net debt. Minus 3 million transfer debt. And there's nothing to pay back. 
So club vision, to summarise, I got a B. Fantastic. We work within the wage budget. We are on course for that. And they are satisfied that I'm developing players using the club's youth system. You know, we've got the players like Pollock and Stone in the team as well. Some notable criticisms there, the amount of draws and a 3-1 defeat, obviously, to Aberdeen isn't ideal. Looking at the squad dynamics and team cohesion is very good. Club atmosphere is average and managerial support is very good. I've got plenty of players that aren't happy. Nobody agrees with what's going on now. And when I look at this, Kingsley opposes us. So I've got one player that opposes us, nine players that support us, and 11 players that have no real opinion of us. What's going on with Kingsley? What's his problem? Playing in a weak position and role and wants to start more games. Fair enough. That was a promise, apparently. No wonder he doesn't like us. And then looking at the player and team stats sense, so Augustin Alvarez scored 29 goals, top goal scorer. Did I even introduce this guy? I, I genuinely can't remember. I may not even have told you about this guy. So I signed him early doors in the season and we got him for 1.5 million from Celtic. He played eight games for them and scored three goals and I brought him in and he's played 36 times for us and scored 17 goals. I'm sure I've spoken about him, but if I haven't, he's a quality player. 25-year-old, one cap, one goal for Uruguay. Current ability, four-star, potential ability, four-star. Finishing 16, heading 16, determination 17. Composure 14 as well. Acceleration 14, pace not quite there, but a decent player. Can only play as a striker, but it doesn't really matter, does it? He scored 17 goals in 36 appearances in the league and 29 goals in all competitions. So yeah, Alvarez, if I've spoken about him, there you go, we've already, we know what he's all about. If I haven't, like I said, I genuinely don't think I have. But yeah, Augustin Alvarez, the man, and I think he's the guy that's just won us the cup as well. Reese Devine then had the highest average rating with a 7.19. Kun had the most assists with 10. Best pass completion was John Soutard, 98%. Most player of the match awards was Kun with 8. Most yellow cards was Devine with 16. A lot of yellow cards for Devine. And most red cards was Peters. He absolutely loves a red card, does Peters. Team stats-wise then, we scored 65 goals, which is the third best. Conceded 39, which is the fourth best. Yellow cards, 72, which is the third worst. And two red cards, which is the third best. Both of them for Peters as well. And average attendance is now over 20,000, just but we're the third best in the league. So let's have a look then at the milestones for the club. So as hard as the hearts mind you in 2021, at the end of the 2023 season, we won the Premier Sports Cup. In the 2024 season, which was our best season in fairness, we won the Premier Sports Cup and the Scottish Cup. So we won two domestic trophies there. But in 2025, we were league champions and that's the big thing. We managed to lift the league trophy. And in 2026, we won the Scottish Cup. So not bad going at all there. Five trophies across five years. And then looking at the overview, then I spent 1,798 days in the job. I brought in a total of 27 players for £12 million, but I sold 30 for a total of £32.5 million. Not bad going at all. The highest fee spent was £4 million for Gelabert, who I've just brought in at the start of last season. And the highest fee received was for Leo Ostergaard, £8.5 million. What a player he was and what a player he could have been for us. He's now valued at £4.7 million. They've ruined him. 26-year-old now, 15 caps, one goal for Norway, but they've absolutely ruined him. How'd he go? And he still played 22 times though for Wolfsburg. So yes, that is it then, guys. So we are done. That is another rebuild. And I think that's been fairly successful. I won the league and I won a cup double. So, so I'd say it's a bit more than fairly successful, if I'm honest. But yes, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. As Hearts, like I say, the only team that I was ever going to do going back to Scotland. So if you have enjoyed the episode, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. This channel, like I said at the start, continues to grow. It's got a mind of its own. And I'd appreciate it if you'd done that and then you were joining me on plenty more rebuilds in the future. So yes, thank you very much. Take care and I'll catch you later. ta -ra.